President Vladimir Putin's announcement that he plans to station tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus has raised concerns about further escalation. This is the first time since the 1990s that Russia will deploy arms outside of its borders. Russian forces have had little success in their aggressive campaign in Ukraine, which has increased fears in Europe that the Russian president may resort to nuclear weapons out of desperation. Meanwhile, the West has supplied Ukraine with modern battle tanks that could be used in a possible spring offensive. So, on to the point we ask, Putin's atomic weapon plan, is the nuclear risk rising? Hello and welcome to To The Point. It's good to have you with us. How serious is the nuclear threat? To understand this, I have three esteemed guests with me today. Gesine Don Bluth is a journalist. She works with one of Germany's public broadcasting radio stations, Deutschlandfunk. Gesine covers Russian affairs and has lived and worked in Moscow as a foreign correspondent for DLF. Anna Clara Arndt is a fellow for global security and nuclear policy at the European Leadership Network, ELN. She writes on nuclear policy and strategic stability issues as well as transatlantic security. And joining us from Bonn is my Ukrainian colleague, Roman Goncharenko. He works for DW's Russian desk and has been extensively covering the war for the last one year. A very warm welcome to all of you. Now, what motivated Putin to take this decision, how it would be executed? We'll discuss all that in a bit. But to begin with, very briefly, I'd like to understand from each one of you, what does this mean for all the parties that are involved? What does it mean for Russia and Belarus? It means that uh, Belarus is almost uh, totally dependent on Russia. This is at first. It means that uh, Belarus might be even more involved in the war against Ukraine. And um, I think that um, also it might be a demonstration of Russia to be not totally depending on China because China um, was against this act. Anna, what does it mean for NATO and for the European Union, very briefly? Um, for NATO and the European Union, I think it means that uh, Russia is continuing its nuclear rhetoric, which it has been engaged in uh, since the beginning of its full-scale invasion of Ukraine uh, last year. Um, Russia has issued a lot of uh, statements. Um, it has engaged in actions uh, which have um, uh, raised the specter of nuclear weapons use again and again. And I think this is another instance of Russia raising the specter of nuclear use um, in uh, Ukraine um, to intimidate Western populations and decision makers. Roman, coming to you, how do you see it? What does this mean for Ukraine? Well, I think for Ukraine there are two important points. One is that the danger from uh, Belarus is growing. So Belarus was used by Russia for uh, an attack on Ukraine uh, a year ago by the, this major invasion. And um, Russia could try to do it again. But the second point, and it is even more dangerous for Ukraine, is that uh, the West will be um, will will be uh, stopped by this decision uh, from uh, delivering or prevented uh, by uh, from delivering uh, more weapons to Ukraine and and stronger weapons uh, weapons that could strike uh, many hundreds of kilometers uh, deep in Russian territory or uh, the territory now occupied by Russia, and this is something uh, that Ukraine would like to um, get from the West those uh, missiles and um, if Russia is escalating on the nuclear level or threatening to escalate by deploying uh, those weapons to Belarus close to the Ukrainian border that might be um, kind of a, a stop shield for the West and to think twice about uh, delivering those weapons like um, missiles I've said or for example jet airplanes. Mm -hmm. Now, Vladimir Putin believes that there's nothing unusual about this move. After all, the United States has done it too, he says. But the Russian president's announcement provoked outrage in the West, especially in Germany. Tactical nuclear weapons like this Iskander missile are designed to be used in a combat zone and are therefore often referred to as battlefield weapons. 
They have lower destructive power and range than strategic nuclear weapons, but they are more precise. That is one of the reasons why Germany reacted with alarm and spoke of another attempt at nuclear intimidation. Russian President Vladimir Putin, on the other hand, sees no breach of law in the stationing. There is nothing unusual here either. The United States has been doing this for decades. They have long placed their tactical nuclear weapons on the territory of their allies, NATO countries, in Europe. The U.S. has reacted calmly, emphasizing there is still no evidence that Russia is planning to use the nuclear weapons. Some analysts regard the deployment as saber-rattling, ahead of an imminent Ukrainian offensive and further Western arms shipments. Would this stationing increase the danger of nuclear escalation in the war in Ukraine? Gazina, this is not the first time that Russia has used the N-word. Is the threat for real this time, or is it more like the boy who cried wolf? I think it's, again, a, a new step of intimidation or trying to intimidate the West, because oh, Russia already deployed nuclear weapons uh, to Kaliningrad, which belongs to Russia, but uh, also is very close to the European Union. This is one step. And um, I think that uh, Putin really understands that the uh, trust in the West towards these intimidations um, is falling. So he needs to do the next step and the next step and the next step. And um, it's very important not to ignore it, but um, I think it's really, as it was said before, um, he tries to prevent the West from delivering those weapons that would really might be a game changer because they would be able to reach Russian occupied territory and even uh, Russian occupied Crimea. So, do you think this is a distraction? Because a lot of people are calling it bluff. Uh, this is a big word. I wouldn't uh, say it's a bluff, but um, but I think uh, the West should uh, really think well about um, the the threats and the dangers and ask themselves and discuss uh, what would be worse for the West if uh, Ukraine would be defeated or if there would be, uh, uh, I don't know, one, two, three percent of, of really a tactical use of tactical nukes. Tactical nukes. Now, a lot of people actually don't understand the difference. So if you could just explain what are tactical nukes, what's the other one that is being used, and how are tactical uh, nuclear weapons actually important in planning military actions? Also, there are tactical or non-strategic and strategic nuclear weapons, and the there is no agreed definition of what con constitutes strategic or non-strategic nuclear weapons, but um, non-strategic tactical nuclear weapons have a shorter range and they have a lower yield, so they have less de destructive potential, but they are st still extremely destructive, of course. Um, and uh, the notion or the, the name tactical implies that they could be used on the battlefield, but it is highly disputed what tactical uh, goal uh, nuclear weapons used on the battlefield could actually serve. So. We just saw that Putin says America has been doing that as well. So yeah. what's the big deal? It's not unusual. Now, if it is not illegal, if it does not violate any agreement, then why should NATO have any problem with it? Well, the political context matters here. Um, NATO, of course, has uh, na nuclear sharing agreements with uh, five states in Europe uh, who are hosting um, US nuclear weapons. But these arrangements have been in place since the Cold War. Um, they have not uh, substantially been changed after the Cold War, um, and the number of nuclear weapons stationed in uh, Europe has decreased after the Cold War. Russia is now announcing that it might um, uh, it put in place a new nuclear sharing arrangement uh, in Europe in the context of a war of aggression as it is waging against Ukraine, in the context of aggressive nuclear rhetoric it has been engaging in. So this political context matters in how this um, announcement is, of course, uh, perceived. Uh, but I would tend to agree with Gesine um, that this is probably another um, uh, instance of nuclear saber rattling. But um, do, do, yeah. we, do we know the numbers? You uh, talked about the American nukes that are there in Europe, in Germany as well. Do we know how many nuclear weapons are we talking about that America has here and what is Russia planning? 
There, well, especially when it comes to um, this uh, recent announcement by Putin, it's still very unclear what he actually is planning to do. He has so far um, mainly the, the new thing in his announcement mainly was that um, um, a nuclear storage facility is supposed to be ready by July 1st. Um, experts have doubts as to whether this is actually feasible. Um, and uh, Putin also has a history of announcing things that he does, then doesn't follow through on. So it really remains to be seen uh, what this nuclear sharing arrangement will look like. And in terms of numbers, it's really impossible to tell right now. Mm -hmm. And if I may add something, yes. I think the comparison Putin makes uh, that uh, between um, deploying nuclear weapons to Belarus to directly to the border with uh, NATO and uh, the West having nukes in uh, other European countries, it doesn't work very well because uh, shouldn't we ask if... Uh, sh uh, I think it would be uh, very significant if uh, the US had nukes in Poland close to the Belarusian border and to Russian sphere of influence. Isn't that right? Yeah, I would also add that um, Russia already has the capability to, um, to reach targets in Ukraine. So if it's deploys uh, nuclear weapons to Belarus or not uh, makes very little difference in military terms. I shall come back to that point. Uh, Roman, now Ukraine, after Putin's announcement, Ukraine has said that it would like to have an emergency meeting of uh, UN Security Council. Do you see that happening? And even if that happens, do you think that that is going to make any change? I don't think it will make any change and Russia will be taking over the uh, chairmanship in the UN Security Council in April, which uh, Ukrainians find ridiculous. Um, anyway, I think that um, Ukraine is um, um, at, a, at a critical point uh, after this announcement by Russia because, as I've just said, Russia might be trying to put more pressure on the West not to deliver certain types of weapons. And this is, in my, in my opinion, the major reason that prevents uh, the West from delivering Ukraine the weapons it needs to win this war. And this is the only um, um, uh, card that Russia can play uh, to prevent it and to stop it. And um, Ukrainians already said that um, the Russian decision to deploy uh, nuclear weapons in Belarus is a sign that Russia is not winning on the battlefield, or at least not as fast as it was hoping for. And um, one more point, uh, I think, uh, why it is could be dangerous for Ukraine, because uh, Russia might use it to put more pressure on the West and on Ukraine to accept some kind of a peace deal or negotiations about a peace deal or settlement. And at this stage, um, a peace deal or settlement or, um, or um, um, ceasefire um, is, is a problem for Ukraine. But it, was, uh, it would legitimize Russian occupation. And Ukraine is trying to prevent it. But by raising the stakes and, and uh, making this announcement and actually deploying the tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus, Russia is trying to put more pressure on the West also to negotiate. And uh, we can also remember that China, China had an initiative, uh, to, um, 12 points, uh, how to reach a peace deal in Ukraine or at least a ceasefire. And we still don't know if any will come out of it because the Chinese leader hasn't spoken to the Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky, so far. And I, uh, Roman just mentioned a uh, peace deal. Do you think that's going to happen anytime soon? And especially after such an announcement? Well, I can't predict the future, but I, uh, right now it seems that both sides are believing that they can make progress on the battlefield still. So uh, I think that those are not the conditions for peace negotiations. Or there, yeah, that's, that's my answer. Kazini? I agree, and I think a few days ago, just uh, Dmitry Peskov, the speaker of Putin, said that uh, currently there is no possibility to come to a peace uh, via negotiations. And coming back to the point you were making earlier, Russia already has Kaliningrad. Then why Belarus? Why does it need to deploy nuclear weapons over there? Um, I think... It's, um, at first, as I said before, it's, it's one more step uh, to intimidate the West. And because we are at a critical point, uh, Ukraine um, is expected to deliver a counter-offensive uh, this spring. And um, experts say that this, uh, this year is really critical for the further development of the war. And, um, the, and, and even the, the Minister of Defense of the United States, Lloyd Austin, said this week that he considers the chances of such a counteroffensive 
very, not very, but he said it's positive due to uh, the modern Western weapons and due to the high losses on the Russian side, which is not only uh, soldiers, but also um, uh, tanks and, and weaponry. So um, this is really a critical point and very much depends on whether and when uh, the West will deliver more modern weapons and especially long-ranging uh, missiles. Uh, there was some information from the Ministry of Defense in Russia this week that uh, they um, shot down a long-ranging U.S. missile, but this might be disinformation, it's not, sh not uh, sure, uh, because we don't know, really don't know if those missiles are already on the ground in Ukraine. But uh, this information from Moscow shows that it's very important and very sensitive for Russia, and I think this is the main reason why Putin made this uh, announcement this week. Mm. Um, the fact themselves, the preparation was done before, so it was expected. So tensions continue even after 13 months. The industrial region of Donetsk is at the epicenter of Russian attacks. After many unsuccessful attempts to capture the town of Bakhmut in the region, Russian forces have now shifted their focus to Avdivka. Footage released by regional police shows scenes of devastation in this frontline city. These images are like something out of a post-apocalyptic film. The frontline town of Avdika, north of Donetsk, has become practically uninhabitable due to heavy Russian bombing. Ukrainian authorities want to evacuate their employees as well as the remaining residents. Those responsible warn that the city could become a second Bakhmut. But Ukraine urgently needs more soldiers at the front to drive the Russian army out of Avdika. Military experts say that although the Ukrainians' motivation to fight remains high, there are insufficient numbers of volunteers, despite intensive recruitment campaigns. More and more men are therefore receiving draft notices. President Zelensky is calling for perseverance. It is wrong and unfair when our warriors, who come from the front, have the feeling that, for many in the rear, the war is supposedly already over. Russia is also running out of soldiers. According to experts, most of the newly mobilized forces are civilians with no previous military experience. Does Ukraine still have the strength to fight back? I shall come to that question. Gizin, first, what is the aim of shifting the attacks to Avdivka now? I'm not sure that this is a, a shift, really. I think the uh, fights continue at both places. Um, and uh, the Russians, a few days ago, uh, we heard that they were less successful, but right now in Bakhmut, uh, the Russians control about two thirds of the city itself. So I would not, uh, would not not ignore what's happening in Bakhmut. But anyway, in Avdiivka, uh, this is a place where fights, heavy fightings, have uh, gone uh, on since since years, already since uh, 2014, and um, it's just um, I think that Russia reacts uh, flexible on the Ukrainian counter um, counter offensives and. Uh, Avdiivka is very important for both sides because it is very close to Donetsk, the center of the Donetsk region. Roman, does Ukraine still have strength to fight back? It does. Um, uh, Ukraine used the time uh, this winter to prepare for a major offensive uh, we are expecting in the coming weeks. Uh, is still waiting for Western um, um, heavy weapons to come. We are seeing tanks being delivered, but it is not enough. And some countries said that uh, they will send tanks after Easter. So Ukraine is still waiting, waiting also for the weather conditions to improve. But um, you are right. Um, there are, uh, and Ukraine used the, the winter to to um, to uh, to train the soldiers. Several new units um, uh, were formed, and uh, is ex especially for for this uh, spring offensive. And um, Ukraine has been withholding the new forces from, for example, fighting in Bakhmut. 
uh, because it hoped um, to use them in spring. And then it had to, use, uh, to, to send at least some of the new forces not to lose Bakhmut. But Russia is putting more and more pressure uh, on Ukrainian forces there in the east. Uh, and as uh, Gesine Donblut absolutely rightly pointed out, uh, Russia is also attacking further north in Avdiivka, in Marinka, and in other places. Um, so uh, Russia is attacking on several points of the front, stretching Ukrainian forces. And this is the critical point because the Ukrainian army does not have enough soldiers to fight back um, a major Russian offensive. So both sides are tired, but Russia has or appears to have more resources, more manpower. Both sides are tired. Anna, there's equal pressure on both Ukraine and Russia. Uh, when it comes to soldiers, when it comes to troops and weapons, the situation is quite bad on both the sides. But where do you see is the situation worse as of now? It's really difficult to tell from a distance because, of course, both sides also have an interest in underreporting their own uh, losses. Um, so it's really difficult um, to say from a distance. But um, what I might add, coming back to um, the nuclear rhetoric, um, th this intensification of the nuclear rhetoric right now suggests that Russia is really trying to use all levers to to, to gain leverage again in this uh, in this current situation and to deter or at least slow down further Western support for Ukraine, as we have mentioned before as well. Um, so this suggests that Russia is really trying to use all the tools it has to 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 improve its situation. How could NATO uh, tackle this situation? Well, I think NATO has been uh, has been reacting very calmly to the nuclear rhetoric as well, and so I think that's good, um, um, not to increase the risk further and um, to remain vigilant and monitor what um, Russia is actually doing versus what it is saying, um, and uh, to rea react when that is actually required. But so far, nothing seems to change on the nuclear field in terms of the nuclear posture of Russia and. Um, on the battleground, it is important, of course, that um, Western states continue supplying uh, military assistance to Ukraine, as they are doing. So NATO is doing everything it can. Germany and Great Britain have kept their promises and delivered heavy battle tanks to Ukraine for the first time since the war began. After much hesitation on the part of the federal government, 18 German Leopard 2 tanks have now arrived in Ukraine. The British Challenger 2 tanks were also delivered Britain had pledged 14 of them. These could be used in a Ukrainian spring offensive. Final thoughts, Anna. Will these tanks be a game changer? Now, I remember in the beginning you said they could be a game changer, but considering the small number, will these be a game changer? Very briefly, we are coming to the end of the show now. Well, it's important to remember that they're part of a larger package of military assistance, so maybe the 18 tanks by themselves will not be a game-changer, but the, the advanced weaponry that is being delivered to Ukraine as part of this larger package, including these 18 tanks, will be very important in Ukraine's spring offensive if it comes. Yeah. Roman, do you think these Western tanks could help Ukraine now? If they are followed by more deliverers, yes, but the number so far is not sufficient. Uh, this war will be decided, I think, by missiles, not by tanks. By missiles. Do you think that these Western tanks could actually be the real reason behind the nuclear threat? No, I think it's more about long-ranging uh, missiles. And uh, altogether, it's important that the Ukraine has... Uh, uh, that Ukraine has modern tanks, air defense and long-ranging missiles. It's about a package. It's about a package. And talking about Belarus before we finish. Now, uh, for Belarus, it's quite a critical situation, domestically as well as internationally. Domestically, polls show that more than 80% of Belarusians, they are against the idea of uh, placing Russian nuclear weapons in Belarus. And internationally, Belarus could actually face uh, more sanctions. Then why would Lukashenko risk it? Because Lukashenko depends almost totally on Putin and because he controls his population to a very large extent. So it's uh, hard to say if there would be any protests and um, also something like um, partisanship and so on. I think the possibilities of people who are against, they are really limited now. So does Belarus even get to decide or is Belarus just following Russian orders? Um, I think uh, Lukashenko, he is known as a person who is uh, somehow leveling out something and going here to this side and to the other side, but I think his options are also now very limited. Anna? I would agree that probably Belarus' options are pretty limited and that this is probably a Russian decision that um, 
Russia sees to be or perceives as being a, in its interest. Um, to, but also, I, I would like to emphasize again that Russia has not yet actually deployed nuclear weapons to Belarus, so it really remains to be seen what actually happens on the ground. But some experts have also said that um, it has actually been deployed there and we are getting the news now. Um, and yes or no, is it even tactically, strategically possible to um, do something like this which gets unnoticed? I would doubt that, but that really remains to be seen, I can't say. No. Thank you. Reports suggest Russia has around 2,000 working tactical warheads. That is 10 times more than the US. It is not clear how many of these will be stationed in Belarus and when they will be deployed. But Putin's announcement has certainly raised an alarm. What do you think? Is the nuclear risk rising? If you're watching us on YouTube, do let us know your thoughts. Thanks for watching and goodbye.